Hey everyone, I've gotten some questions about how to assemble the 3D printed case in various parts of the DE10 Nano Mister project, so I thought I'd make a quick video on how to do it. Now you can see here I have my DE10 Nano. The acrylic top piece and these four Phillips head screws have already been taken off, and I've already applied this heat sink that comes with the I.O. board or with the acrylic fan and heat shield. First we're going to take these standoffs and we're going to separate them setting aside the bottom part, which is a female to female standoff. If these are too tight, you can use a five millimeter nut driver. Position your board with the power jack facing up and take your SD-RAM module and install it like this, making sure that these three pin connectors are properly seated all the way and that this 20 by two pin connector is also seated. As you can see, when I pushed down, I was making sure the table was supporting the weight of the board. Now take your board and locate the micro SD card slot on the bottom. With the bottom of your 3D printed case, Align the board so that the four holes match up as best you can in the corners. Double check that the micro SD card slot is accessible through this hole. Now take your five millimeter nut driver, insert one standoff and go ahead and start threading it in not all the way tight just to get it started. You want to get all four standoffs in before you tighten things down. These holes have been drilled and tapped with a three millimeter 0.5 tap so they should be good to go some boards are a little easier than others again it's not perfect but now you can go ahead and tighten up just kind of finger tight it's really not going to go anywhere once you clamp the case together so you just want to make sure that it's bottomed out as much as you can but don't over torque it It's plastic, so a little force goes a long way. Okay, you can see here there's a small gap there. I'm gonna try one more time just to tighten it a little bit more, trying to get it seated all the way, just so you don't have any clearance issues with the buttons up top. Okay. That one and that one. That looks pretty good. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is we're going to take our front panel, and this is the ethernet port, which is what I consider the front, and we're gonna slide it in this channel here, noting that it might bend a little bit with the ports being in the way, but once you get it all the way down, there's just a little bit of free play. We'll do the same with the back, with the orientation like this. Now that we have that in there, it's time to install our I.O. board. Go ahead and take your I.O. board and it's going to use the other 20 by 2 pin header on the DE10 Nano and making sure that these 10 pins here also go into these holes here. Go ahead and gently insert it, sliding aside the, the VGA port side uh, panel. Once you get it inserted, I like to just kind of gently push on the corners, pin header, and the fan bolts just to give it a little bit of, make sure it's in there tight. All right, and as you can see in this current case, the USB port is blocked by this tab. Hopefully I'll revise the case. Um, I didn't make this one, but we'll revise it in the future. And once the LL Cool Joy is out, that this will be accessible. 
Okay, as you can see here, the board is pretty close to flush against all of the standoffs. So we're in a good position now to go ahead and fasten all four corners with the original Phillips screws that came with the DE10 Nano. So I'm gonna switch bits for a number two Phillips bit. And go ahead and fasten these in. One last check to make sure everything's finger tight. Okay, switching bits now, we're gonna go to a number one. Actually, that was the number one, that works for the top screws too. Number one or number two Phillips works for these. But we're gonna need a number one screw for these small black screws that are gonna hold the two top and the bottom pieces of the case together. Just take the top half of your case and remember the front of the case is going to have both the ethernet port and the three buttons that are going to align with these three push buttons, the micro switches rather. Take it and slide it using the front and back panels as your guide. Now you're going to have to make sure that this sync on green switch slides through this hole so it's going to take a little bit of finagling. I like to put it in at an angle like this. Okay, and then we're going to slide it down. And before you get it all excited and get it all uh, snapped together, just do a quick check on your push buttons, make sure that they return to their position and you should be good to go. Now take one of your four, these are uh, M2 screws. They are four millimeters long, four or five or six. And you're gonna insert them one by one. These side holes are not pre-tapped, so just Again, go easy. If you have a kit that has one screw a little bit shorter, make sure that's the one you put on this back port here where the USB port is. Again, nice and easy. Switching sides. And last one. Okay, so our case is now assembled. Feels much more uh, finished now. Do one last look over. Again, the seam could be a little bit better. You can adjust the screws later if you want, but for now, that's gonna work. Set that aside and go ahead and grab your USB hub. Now, this is something I've heard a couple people um, you know, ask questions about, and this is the way I do the USB hubs with this micro USB cable, this hot glue for strain relief. And what we're gonna do first is probably the most difficult part, which is taking the front panel and we're gonna fish this connector through this small hole right here. Now the trick is you put it in at an angle at a kind of a diagonal so you get to use the most, uh, the largest distance across that hole. And it's gonna basically go through pretty easily up until it gets to this flared back section. So what you're gonna do, and I know this seems counterintuitive, but you're just gonna pull through, kind of get one corner through, and it'll pop right through like that. Now take your hub and position it with the power jack, the DC jack right here, in this square hole on this side, and line it up with the four holes on the corner. Try to get it as lined up as you can.
Again, four screws. I'm gonna switch back to the number two Phillips bit. And I, I've kind of switched styles of screws uh, as I've learned and gotten feedback and evolved a little bit, but you're just gonna take them and these holes have also been pre-tapped. So just go ahead and take them, locate the holes, get each of the four screws started. And then go ahead and just snug them down finger tight. Doesn't have to survive a plane crash, just has to be able to uh, provide some strain relief for the ports and keep everything snug together. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna take this and we're going to route the cable behind this USB plug here. And then we're gonna slide this front face down into the channel. Now the front face has a little bit of an overhang here and here, so just make sure you're clearing that. Snap it down into place, and then check that this front, the panel is flush with the side piece. Same thing for the back. Drop it down, snap it into place. All right, last step. We're going to take this and remember this is the front. It's going to be right under this micro USB port. We're going to slide the case into, there's a little bit of a, of a overhang there. We're going to slide the case under that little lip. We're going to take this, pull it back a little bit and clip it into place. Now it doesn't, it's not the most secure thing ever, but it's not going to come apart either. Slide, carefully slide this micro USB cable back a little bit. Plug it in, and you're all set. Last but not least, if you would like to cover up the sink on green and the secondary micro SD card slot, go ahead and insert those plugs. Hope this tutorial has been helpful for you, and thanks again.